Hey y'all, it's CJ with Smoky Beginnings. Let me tell you something that I'm totally not proud of. Back in the day, I used to be the king of dry steaks, but those days are long gone. And today, I'm sharing my secrets and tips that I learned along the way for how to perfectly grill tomahawk steak on charcoal every single time. Plus, we'll be making some cheesy potato wedges that are the perfect side dish. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Alrighty, let's get this grill fired up. We're going for a two zone fire today. Picture this, coals piled high on one side, rip roaring hot. The other side of the grill, nice and chill. Perfect for slow cooking. This way you get the best of both worlds, a screaming hot sear for your meat and a gentler heat to finish it off. To get those coals going, I like using a chimney starter, but hey, if you don't have one, no worries. You can use natural fire starter cubes, an electric starter, or even some of the charcoal bag crumpled up. I suggest ditching the lighter fluid, it messes with the meat's flavor. Once those coals are nice and red with a layer of ash, it's time to move them over. Dump the lit coals onto the unlit ones and give it about 15 to 20 minutes to fully light up. If you're interested in learning how to use the two zone fire setup for hamburgers and hot dogs, I have covered the whole process in detail in a previous video. So stay tuned until the end of this video where I have a link to that video. And while you're here, make sure to like and subscribe. Not only are you supporting our small channel, but you're playing an integral part in helping the channel grow and allowing me to deliver great content to others. Now, let's talk about the star of the show, the Tomahawk Steak. Ever seen a ribeye with a bone sticking out that looks like it could belong to a caveman? It's a ridiculously flavored full cut packed with marbling. And let's be honest, it looks super impressive when it's cooked. To get that perfect cook on our tomahawk, we need the steak to be hanging out at room temperature. This takes the chill off and ensures even cooking throughout. So take the steak out of the fridge about 45 minutes before you fire up the grill and make sure to get rid of any moisture on the surface. Now, let's talk about flavor. We're gonna use mayonnaise as our binder. If you haven't tried it yet, give it a try it gives you a crispy, crunchy crust that's to die for. Since the tomahawk is a ribeye, it has a decent amount of fat and flavor, so seasoning it is key. Keep it simple with some salt and pepper, don't be shy with it, and if you're feeling adventurous, hit it with a little garlic powder. Let the steak sit for about 20 minutes, letting those flavors really get to know each other. By now, your grill is smoking hot. Time to get that tomahawk on the grill. And we're going for a reverse sear. Slap it on the cooler side and let it slowly come up to temp. The gentle heat will slowly cook the inside to our perfect level of doneness. It has been about 15 minutes of cooking time. I'm going to go ahead and flip the steak. Now most people are going to say only to flip once. I like to flip and flop multiple times to ensure that I'm not burning it. Because every cook is different and I could have some temperature fluctuations that need to be addressed. So I'll flip the steak, close the lid and come back in another 15 minutes, check in. So it's been about 30 minutes and it's time to check in and look at that color. The fat has rendered, the juices are oozing, it looks great. And we're getting pretty close to being done. It is now time to start our searing process. I like to start searing at about 10 to 15 degrees below my desired internal temperature. Let's move the steak over to the hotter side and sear the crap out of that meat. One of the things that I've learned along the way is in order to nail the perfect doneness, we gotta use a little tool called a meat thermometer. It might seem like an extra step, but trust me, it's the key to unlocking juicy, delicious steak every single time. You don't wanna cook by time or by looks. For the techies out here, you can use a fancy meat probe like my Meter Plus. It constantly checks the internal temperature of the steak and even the ambient temperature of the grill. Plus it sends alerts straight to your phone via Bluetooth so you always know exactly when to take the steak off for that perfect level of doneness. There's a link in the description if you're interested in learning more. And here's your cheat sheet for internal temperatures. For a super rare steak, you're looking at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Feeling a bit more adventurous? 130 degrees is your mark for medium rare. Like it cooked through a bit more? Then bump it up to 140 degrees for medium. Still not convinced? 150 degrees gets you to medium well. And for those, who prefer their steak well done, 160 degrees is your golden ticket. And just a little pro tip here, remember, the steak keeps cooking a bit even after you take it off the grill. 
That's called carryover cooking. So take it off a few degrees before your desired final temperature to avoid overcooking that beautiful meat. Now, let's talk about letting the steak rest. Carefully transfer the tomahawk to a cutting board. Then, drench it in some herb butter. I made this butter by melting it in the microwave for a few seconds. Then, I added Dano's original seasoning blend. If you don't want to use the store bar blend, then add some salt, pepper, garlic, and some onion powder. Also include some greens, like parsley, rosemary, thyme, and oregano. Then give the steak a little rest, about 15 minutes, tented with some foil. And it might seem boring, but trust me, it's very, very important. Resting allows those juices to redistribute through the steak, making it extra tender. Also, it gives the steak a chance to soak up that great herb butter. While our steak is resting, let me show you how to make the perfect side gist. My super cheesy potato wedges. And here's how I made them. First, we gotta wash and chop some potatoes into wedges. Any standard russet or bacon potato will work here. To get them extra crispy, soak them in a bowl of salt water for a bit. This step is optional, but it helps draw out some starch for a crispier texture. Another option is to boil the potato wedges in salt water for about 15 minutes until they're nice and tender. Regardless if you boiled the potatoes or not, the next step is placing the wedges into a preheated air fryer. But before we toss them in, let's talk about seasoning. Today I'm feeling a kick, so I'm using Everglades Fish and Chicken Rub. It's got this awesome blend of smoky paprika, a hint of garlic, and some kicking cayenne pepper. A little tip here is most air fryers are on the smaller side, so cook the potato wedges in batches to avoid overcrowding the basket. Let me tell you, nobody wants a soggy wedge, right? We want them crispy and golden brown. So toss in half the wedges at a time and cook for about 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, let's make the killer cheese sauce. Add butter to a saucepan that is on the stove over medium heat. Mix in enough flour to make the butter and flour mixture into a paste. Add milk to thin out the paste. Add cheese. Once the mixture is thinned out, allow it to melt. Once the cheese is melted, you can add the seasoning, which is salt, pepper, paprika, mustard powder, and if you want to kick it up a notch, some dashes of hot sauce. Then let the flavors melt. I'll leave a link in the comments to the full recipe. Now that the steak is resting, our potato wedges have been air fried and we created a killer cheese sauce Let's assemble our dish. My first cut of steak is usually along the bone. I then slice the steak against the grain and arrange it on a platter. This inside looks like it's medium to medium well done, just how my family members like it. However, I do suggest cooking this steak to medium rare for the best results. Also, it wouldn't hurt if you added some fish and salt on top of the steak. It gives the steak just an added bit of flavor. Once you have sliced the steak, Add a pile of super crunchy potato wedges, then add several large dollops of beautiful cheese sauce. You can also add some sour cream, some avocados, or some hot sauce if you chose so. And then there you have it, perfectly charcoal grilled tomahawk steaks. Now all that there is left to do is to serve the steaks along your favorite sides. Give the recipe a try and comment below tell me what is your favorite steak. For the full recipe, visit the link in the comments below. Check out the suggested playlist at the end for more char grilling recipes and visit my website smokybeginnings.com for even more grilling goodness. Until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.